Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. and today I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while and a lot of you seem interested in it so I'm very excited. This is the studio tour history or the fascinating history of the Universal Studios Hollywood Studio Tour. So let's get started on this very historical journey that births Universal Studios Hollywood and the whole Universal brand. Universal Studios Hollywood is one of the oldest operating movie studios in the whole world. It is located in LA County and is well over 100 years old. They were also one of the first studios to offer Backlot Studio Tour. The whole reason any theme park, Universal theme park, exists today is because of the immense popularity of the Studio Tour. Carl Lamal came to LA in 1914, that was about 108 years ago with the hopes of opening a large movie studio. Universal actually really started movies that are on the East Coast. He tried in the East Coast, but then he wanted to come out West uh, to really expand. Again, he needed, a, he needed a large plot of land in a relatively new city, of course, called Los Angeles. So he acquired that large plot of land in San Fernando Valley from a family what is now uh, for now, what is now called Universal City and decided to build a movie studio, studio here. It was not going to be any movie studio though. He always wanted to show the public how the movies were made. That was his goal. He wanted to make it kind of an attraction and kind of show the public behind the scenes of what's going on. In 1915, he sent out a press release and invited 20,000 people and media members to the opening of what is now Universal Studios and took them on a tour of the back lot, tour of the back lot of his new studio. The original studio tour opened in 1915 and had no trams and had a bleacher seating and guests would pay 25 cents just to up just a quarter, which was a lot in that time, to learn about the history of movie making and see it all come up to action. This was also during the silent movie area, which means guests were encouraged to cheer and boo for their favorite heroes and villains, which is pretty cool to add a nice little interactive element to it. But when walkie-talkies were introduced and sound was added to movies, guests were no longer allowed to be on the movie sets, and also they obviously weren't allowed to, allowed to cheer and boo because it would interrupt the movie. Guests were also get to tour what an actor's dressing would look like, and it was not until 49 years later, 1964, where the first set of trams were introduced. 1964 was also the official opening of the theme park of Universal Studios Hollywood. The only reason the Universal Studios Hollywood became a popular theme park, or became a theme park, because the studio was so popular, Universal wanted to add things to do um, while guests waited for the tram on the tour. Almost like a virtual queue situation, because instead of guests waiting in line, they were encouraged to go see a show and, and do those other attractions and activities while they're waiting for the turn on the studio tour, because that still is really the main attraction of the park today. This led to the development of stunt shows and eventually attractions. And that's also why Universal Studios Hollywood was developed in such a piecemeal type fashion, because it was just attractions to and shows to, you know, get people uh, distracted or have people, something for people to do while they waited for the studio tour. Unlike in Florida, where those were master plan theme parks. The development of the theme park continued in a somewhat peaceful fashion. Uh, somewhat piecemeal, piecemeal fashion until just about 2013. Well, I'm sure they had a plan before, but 2013 was the newest NBC, uh, NBC Evolution plan where it seemed like there's a big direction for the park. The NBC Evolution plan is what led to the expansion of the theme parks and kind of a, a proper master plan for the whole property that led to more studio development. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Super Nintendo World, the eventual hotels that's coming, and all these new attractions that we're seeing built today was because of this plan in 2013, and this is the guiding Universal until 2035, and then there will be a new and updated evolution plan. The popular of Universal Studios Hollywood gave confidence to the company to scoop up land in Florida, but what eventually would become a Universal Orlando Resort. Also, it helped that Disney World was right next door. The studio tour evolved numerous times since its inception, including where it starts and ends. When it started back in 1964, guests used to part from what is now the lower lot and go to the back lot. On July 15, 1964, sorry, 1915, but not, July 15, 1964, the modern studio tour was born, and that was also the birth of the, the official inauguration of Universal Studios Hollywood. In 1965, the tour interest moved to what is now the upper lot, and uh, in the future, could be moved right back down to the lower lot. In 1916, the Steel Tour had to dramatically change its program. That is because the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, enacted a new rule prohibiting guests from visiting sound stages. Production was ramping up in the back lot as well, as, as well meaning the studios cannot disturb in the movie making. By the way, by this time, that when the trams were introduced, the Universal, you couldn't get off the tram. The 
the tours were fully tram only instead of the earlier times when uh, you can get on and off the tram. But now, uh, since when these new rules came into place, uh, yeah, you could not get off the tram. They fully tram only these tours. But in response to these obstructions, Universal decided to add experiences along the tour that doubled as attractions. Sets that are still around today. The rad include the Flash Flood segment, the Psycho House, the Base Motel, the World of the World set, the Quake, and Jaws. The tour also goes through, goes through uh, massive facades called the Metro sets, which will be used for movies such as Captain America, um, Back to the Future, and much more. These have been used in many movies from Universal, and of course, such as Disney, as I mentioned. And But in 20, 2008, unfortunately, there was a massive fire on the back that burned down the Metro sets and the former King Kong, King Kong attraction, which was when we lost that massive King Kong animatronic. Two years later, Universal rebuilt the Metro sets and updated the King Kong attraction to what is now known today as King Kong 360 3D, which is super, super cool, but yeah, we, it's just all screens and no more giant King Kong animatronic, which sucks. Not all original attractions have tried to survive, survive the tour, though. The parting of the Red Sea and the collapsing bridge, which really scared me as a child, have been removed or just stopped working with no repairs. Other former attractions of the tour included the Avalanche Shuttle, Rockside, Runaway Train, Battlestar Galactica, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, Fast and Furious Extreme Close Up, and the Whoville set. Of course, some attractions got um, got new life, like Fast and Furious has got new life supercharged, which is uh, not that great of an attraction. So now it's getting new life again as Hollywood dripped. But other things, uh, and Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, maybe got some new life as Revenge of the Mummy roller coaster, but other guys are in the attraction graveyard forever. New attractions and sets have been added to the uh, tour in recent years. The sets from the movie Nope were added in 2022, and the much maligned Fast Mirror Supercharge, as I just mentioned, was added in 2015. But Supercharge will likely be reimagined, reimagined along with the Nope sets in a massive Falls Lake, Falls Lake expansion pad when, uh, possibly for more Harry Potter, when the new coaster opens next year or in 2025. Even with the theme park rapidly expanding, don't worry, the studio tour is certainly not going somewhere anywhere. It's the headlining attraction and it is extremely unique, unique for any theme park. A lot of theme parks have trams, well, not really, but the ones that do, it's usually fake movie sets and stuff. This is a real working movie studio. Sure, it has um, fake sets like the Flash Flood and Earthquake, but even those have been used in actual movies and TV shows. And you can also see an actor walking around sometimes, and that's just pretty awesome. In fact, more investments are being made into the CO tour. Earthquake is under a year and a half refurbishment, refurbishment and expects to be reopening in February 2024. And the CO tour itself, lots of sets like the Psycho House and other sets, maybe like the World of the World set, will be going under refurbishment, refurbishment and enhancements because next year is the 60th anniversary of Universal Studios Hollywood. So the CO tour is now going through some nice enhancements and will be all done by spring of next year for the 60th anniversary, which is awesome. I'm very curious about which attractions may stay or go on the two ones, including in this refurbishment. Maybe during this enhancement, there'll be a new iteration of the Steel Tour. I, again, I'm confident Supercharge will be going away as well as Nope sets, but how about some more of the classic stuff? Will Abney Allen ever get swapped out? Or will it get enhanced? Universal is definitely not shy about taking attractions they need, uh, taking out attractions if they need space. So, any attraction that certainly won't get refurbed during this enhancement is up for grabs. I'm also curious if the tour will get shorter, because I mentioned rumors has it the tour lot will move to the or the tour engines will move to the lower lot again when the tram garage area and upper lot gets re redeveloped. So I wonder if that will shorten the tour or what the route will be when that happens. But um, or I wonder if it could be even a half walk through again if they, if they kind of go back to that route, go back to its roots, be a half walk through, because then it would uh you know the time would still be um back up to an hour. By the way, uh as part of the studio two investments, the trams are all electric now, so they wouldn't spend all that money on electric trams if it were going away. There are also rumors of it becoming and a survey even of it becoming an upcharge experience that you were. And then entrance from CityWalk. Uh, those ideas, that, those rumors have been put to bed as that does not seem like it's happening.
Did you know the history of the Stewie Tour before listening to this video? What was your favorite part? What, what was most interesting to you? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more theme park updates. And if you want to support the channel, support our Patreon. Patreon.com slash club722. You got a free pin and lots of giveaways and exclusive products when you join, including early access to this video. If you liked this video, press the thumbs up. As always, guys, have a trail-tastic day.